Hey everybody and welcome back to another edition of Community Rewind. I'm your host Alex Mead and uh, if you missed anything in previous weeks remember you can always head on over to WLCUTV.com scroll down to you see the Community Rewind icon click there and you can find up Community Rewind and a bunch of other great programs uh, but I don't know why I'm wasting so much time we got to get things going we have a ton of stuff to get to once again this week so let's just go ahead and get started. As many of you know, Campbell's University has uh, quite a few regional centers spanning from coast to coast, really. Just a couple of them here in Kentucky are Harrodsburg, Casey County, Somerset, and there are two up in Louisville headed up by our first guest, Mark Mann. Now he'll be able to speak to how the Louisville Education Centers have handled the pandemic as well as what he's seen out in the community with the death of Brianna Taylor. Let's just go ahead and send it up to Louisville to Mark Mann. At CU Louisville, uh, we have we actually have handled the, the pandemic fairly well. Uh, we most of our students uh, are remote. Uh, you know, we've got 6,000 students, and, and a majority of them uh, don't live in Louisville. And so our teams were really already set up uh, to work remotely, uh, and so we didn't we did not miss a beat. Uh, one of the things that we did have a challenge with was uh, our, our local students, uh, some of whom were right out of high school, uh, we did kind of have to get our student services folks involved uh, to help them navigate uh, online learning. Uh, our faculty were set up, uh, many of them have already taught online. Uh, so, so we handled it fairly well. I think the biggest issue that we faced in Louisville is that we are such a tight knit group uh, we are we are we do so many things together uh, around campus and, and also outside of campus uh, that just being away from each other and losing that camaraderie was one of our biggest challenges yeah one, one of the one of the things that we uh, that we really had to take into account uh, as we started down this journey you know this path um, you know, during COVID was our classrooms are always so full. We have so many students that when, when students do come on campus, we may have a classroom with 150 students in it uh, or 80 students in it. Uh, and so we really have had to take a look at our uh, occupancy, uh, the size of our classrooms and, and some of our occupancy uh, requirements. Uh, so, for example, uh, we have a class that will hold 81 students typically. Now it only holds 27 because of social distancing requirements. And so when we do go back to face-to-face -face instruction in the fall, uh, we're really going to have to take that into account. Uh, I, I think that technology has, has really been a, you know, a, a big benefit for all of us during this time. Uh, you know, being able to do Teams meetings and, and uh, work remotely and 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 still maintain effectiveness. Um, you know that's something that we will continue even after after the pandemic is over. And and I have to say, I am very very proud of our team leaders. Uh, they continue to hit all of their key performance indicators through all of this. I, I'm I'm on all of their their team chats all throughout the day, so I'm getting pinged all day long and watching them work all day and and share student ID numbers and, and you know, all of these, um, you know, still being able to be successful and working with students is just amazing. I mean, we have really not missed a beat. I'm very, very proud of them. So I still have continued to come into the office and it's been very lonely. Um, I, I sit in my office by myself or, or sometimes I'll even uh, not stay in the office. I'll come into the student activity center. There's a ping pong table in here. We have a couple of TVs. Um, there's a kitchen, uh, but regardless, I'm still by myself. Uh, so I have, I have continued to come into the office. Uh, I think it, it, it helps for the, the team leaders and also the, the team members, all of our associates. When they have a team's call with me, they know that I'm in the office. You know, it, it dispels fear and, and it kind of keeps shows consistency. Um, and, and I've kind of enjoyed coming in. Now, there have been a few days I have worked uh, from home. I do have a home office, um, and I typically don't have that many distractions, but I, I have preferred uh, keeping a schedule. I read early on that uh, if you just maintain things like you always have, you know, get up, get a shower, get out the door, go into the office, even if I'm by myself, you, you maintain that consistency, uh, and, and, you know, you, you 
you keep things moving along. So it's it's been personally, I, there hasn't really been much of a difference. With Brianna Taylor here in Louisville, uh, we have witnessed protests uh, here in Louisville. Louisville has has kind of been a focus uh, in terms of the protests, uh, we, but we've witnessed protests across the country by people of all walks of life uh, in support of millions of Americans who have not been given equal opportunity. Um, they, they've been limited by injustice and, and we know that their voices need to be heard. Um, a dialogue really needs to begin that, that allows for healing uh, and forgiveness as well as commitment to long lasting change. I do not think we can continue to go on as we have gone on. Uh, and I think the peaceful protest we've seen here in Louisville is just a jumping off point. Uh, I think that the, the dialogue obviously must continue. Um, racism is not an attribute that we are born with. Uh, it is a learned belief um, and, and it's founded in evil and it drives evil and unacceptable behavior. Um, and, and we are and we should be standing by those uh, who want change to happen. Um, and we are and we should be dedicated to stopping the, the senseless violence that took took the lives not only of, of Breonna Taylor but uh, Ahmaud Aubrey and uh, or Ahmaud Aubrey and and George Floyd, uh, David McAtee here in Louisville. Um, it was a boy from Hodgenville who grew up to be our 16th president who referenced uh, in his inaugural address the better angels of our nature and and we are and must be committed to everyone achieving their potential. Uh, and uh, living a life of dignity, um, living a life without fear uh, and injustice. Uh, we must be together. We must be listening. Uh, and Campbellsville University here in Louisville, the Louisville Center, will always uh, stand ready to help with education, uh, with tools, uh, which we will use to start a dialogue uh, and also support the dialogue. And we will continue to let our lights shine as servant leaders in the community. If you love them enough to relearn math so you can teach them math, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're correctly buckled in the back seat. American Red Cross urgently needs blood and platelet donations and asks healthy donors to schedule an appointment to give during this coronavirus outbreak. Patients are counting on life-saving transfusions. Visit redcrossblood.org. <gasps> Staring contest! Still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. I adopted Bento in 2010 from a shelter. This cat makes me make art. He's my best friend, but a lot of people know him as Keyboard Cat. Wash your hands, stay home, cover your cough. It's our new reality with COVID-19. Physicians and public health professionals are trying to protect us because our healthcare system would be overwhelmed if too many people get seriously ill. We have to take their advice seriously. So, prepare, focus on the essentials, protect, keep some space from people outside your home, and disinfect a lot. Get the facts at kycovid19.ky.gov. Prepare, protect, disinfect. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it. First impression. My way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Welcome back to Community Rewind. Still a lot to come today, but up next is a little bit of a history lesson. So a few people know this about me, that during my time at CU as a student, I was actually a double major. I majored in social studies and mass communications because I had a love for history, getting off the school bus and watching the History Channel with my dad all the time. So it still holds a special place in my heart, so that's why I'm so happy about this next segment to bring a little bit of history to everybody. 
as uh, up next is one of my former professors, Dr. Wendy Wood, to give us a little bit of knowledge of Juneteenth. As many people look at their iPhones today, and I, why does my calendar say that there's a, a holiday? What's Juneteenth? I don't, I don't know what Juneteenth is. Juneteenth is a state holiday, as many states actually recognize Juneteenth as a holiday. So uh, let's just get a little bit of a history lesson from Dr. Wendy Wood. Juneteenth starts uh, June 19th, 1865 in Galveston, Texas. It was two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. And the slaves living in Texas didn't know that they had been freed two and a half years before. So when Major General Gordon Granger gets to uh, Galveston with his troops, he reads something called General Order Number no. 3 and basically frees the slaves. And so they count that as their liberation day. It's also called uh, Freedom Day. And so many of the slaves that realized that they were freed left the area and just scattered, trying to find their family, trying to, to find a new life. And uh, as they left, they would take off their slave clothes and they would get clothes from the master's house so that they, you know, could dress human almost. And so June 19th became the day that the African-American community set aside to come together and celebrate, um, celebrate new education opportunities, economic opportunities, uh, self-improvement. And throughout the the mid 1800s, sometimes they would have to meet in secret. Um, there was a group that bought uh, some land in Houston and it's called Emancipation Square where they would celebrate. And then with the onset of Jim Crow, it became harder and harder for them to gather in mass. And so oftentimes families would gather smaller gatherings and you know, it was barbecues and festivals some would hold, you know, sporting, sporting events. Food was the main thing and, and a celebration of everything that they had accomplished and everything that they would accomplish. And after the civil rights movement of the 1950s and 60s, then Juneteenth became more of a, a central dialogue for the African community, African American community. And so it all begins in, in Galveston, Texas. And it's, you know, I think 46 states plus the District of Columbia have declared it a, a state holiday. This one is important for the community, especially um, in, in light of recent events. I think this year it takes more of, a, of an important role in bringing exposure to what our African-American community has been through for four, over 400 years. And I think there will be a more um, broadly celebrated Juneteenth this year. I think you'll see more diversity. I think that um, it will be more public and more broadcast, which is a great thing. It, it will be their time to shine and bring focus onto this very important day for African-American community. And you know, a lot of people in the white community, did, they didn't even realize it existed. They had no idea what Juneteenth meant. And what's amazing is when Granger came into Galveston and told the slaves, then people began to ask, why weren't they told earlier? And there were several theories. One the white community, the plantation owners didn't know, or they didn't tell the slaves because they wanted to keep them enslaved. And there's even a theory that the military waited until the cotton crop came in that year because the military would confiscate the cotton crops to pay for their military campaign. So I would like to see more people get out and, and show support for this, especially in local communities like ours. Camelsville. 
What's up, guys? I'm Don Smith, and this is What's Cooking Neighbors. So join me every Friday right here on WLCU, where I'll take your taste buds on a culinary journey. Hamilton was adopted from a rescue in 2008. He's quite the pug about town. He gets invited to a lot of parties. He knows he's a pretty big deal. How could you not love him? Life's taught me a lot, and I'm ready for more. Well, you're not the typical kind of candidate that I hire. But you are exactly what I'm looking for. Your company could be missing out on the candidates it needs most. Learn how to find a great pool of untapped talent at gradsoflife.org. People think I'm trash, but they're wrong. Today, I'm just an aluminum can, but one day, I could be a stadium. The American Red Cross urgently needs blood and platelet donations and asks all healthy donors to schedule an appointment to give now. With the coronavirus outbreak, it is important to maintain a sufficient blood supply. Your blood donation is critical and can help save lives. Please schedule an appointment today. Download the Blood Donor app, visit redcrossblood.org, or call 1-800-RED-CROSS today. You can make a difference. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Community Rewind rolls on right here on WLCU TV, and uh, we're just halfway. There's still a lot more to come, so let's just go ahead and keep it going. Up next is the coordinator of the Office of Diversity and uh, Community, uh, Wanda Washington. We'll get her take on uh, what the office has been doing um, in the past, as well as some things in the future that she can't wait for. I'm Wanda Washington. I am the coordinator of diversity and community at Campbellsville University. Uh, Dr. Carrie Ruiz is a director, and we work closely with LTLT. We have not been in year in yet. A year in will be in July. So our purpose is to coordinate activities that the students and our community can come together and have dialogue with. Thus far, we've had several activities. Uh, we have had a Christian response to immigration that was a panel that students and the community is invited to. Uh, the things that we do, we like to pull the community in also because we're talking about diversity and community and how can we come together and be supportive of each other. And we strongly focus on uh, being different and how can we appreciate and accept one another. And one of our big activities is Dialogue on Race that we form in the month of October. And this is gonna be the, in the 20th year. And the purpose of that is to have community faces to come into the into the school with the students and have dialogue with the students. That's a safe atmosphere for the students because we make it comfortable enough for them to speak and feel safe, not just about differences in race, but whatever they feel comfortable speaking about. And that has been quite ongoing and we really, really appreciate that and the staff that supports us, the teachers, or the professors uh, agree that they want to have someone to come in and speak to their class. So we all have to work together as a team. And that's been pretty fortunate for us in the years. We do have several things planned that were cut off because of COVID, of course, but we will continue with those things. We really want to implement a diversity and community student advisory board. And we're hoping to get that off running. And we would like the students to uh, be participants that are serious about diversity and accepting others. And strangely, you get people that are working all the time. So you, we're looking for the caliber of person that is dedicated to the cause. They, they most likely probably have a good GPA. Uh, not saying that you gotta be smart or not smart, but those are the people that you find that are the are the working people. 
are the people that keeps the wheels turning. So if you take all that out, we are looking for a group of young people that are willing to help speak for the students. That's what we need. We need voices to speak for the students. And because we the adults, we come together and we try to implement what we think is good and is going to be feasible and is going to work for the students. So we want a group of students to speak for themselves and help us as the diversity and community and the LTLT to offer them what they are looking for. So that's one of our big things going back, coming back into the school year. Well, one thing that I'm really ready to get after uh, is trying to be uh, a part of the retention program. How can we maintain and keep our students in college? So, it, and it, does, it doesn't matter the race. Of course, I, and I hope I'm not saying this incorrectly, I do believe that there is a high retention of African, I mean, a high number of African Americans that don't remain in college. So yes, that's what I would look at, but I'm not just, I don't want to look at just that. And I know other people are working on this. And by no means do I want to step on toes, but I want to be added to that circle. I want to be just be, I like to be able to sit at that table. So somebody like me, that looks like me, can see me and know that I'm there for them. And that is not in a negative way at all. It doesn't mean that you don't want to help because you do or she wouldn't be there. But it's always good to see somebody that looks like you. For diversity and community, when we come together, we want to increase self-belief. So why am I talking to you? I want to increase your self-belief. And self is you, who you are. I want to help you work through adversity because we all have that. Uh, we want to develop a positive image. How far do we get when we're negative? And we want to be courageous. Now, being courageous, we need to be courageous in a meaningful way. Being courageous doesn't mean be offensive to someone else. It means being courageous to yourself with respect of others. So I just, I kind of like that, put that all together and kind of go by those rules, I would say, to help our, our program go forward. to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. It appears these hot ashes are about to be dumped, which could possibly start a wildfire. How will Smokey deal with such a hot situation? The garden hose defense. Next, a thorough stir. Then, another spray. And finally, feeling if the ashes are cool. Oh, yeah. Ah, yes, the selfie. A ritual practiced so frequently with this tribe, but not so much by Smokey Bear. Only you can prevent wildfires. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Not anything but lonely. We had this like deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. 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 One person left for us this week on Community Rewind. And uh, as many people know, uh, one of the newest sports here at Campbell's University is eSports. And I know it's a new sport 
pretty much in general. There's still a little bit of confusion about it, but hopefully today we can shed a little bit of light on it. Uh, just like the basketball team, though, COVID-19 did affect the end of the season, but they were able to end on a high note on the upside. So let's head on over to the eSports arena to talk to the head coach of the eSports team, CJ Moritz. So at the start of uh, COVID happening, uh, we, we had to take you know, some extra precautions, uh, but once it started to get a little bit more serious, we had to cut our uh, season a little short with uh, two of our uh, titles, two of our esports. So uh, Smash and uh, Rocket League was cut a little short as well, but we were able to uh, get into another tournament for them. So that was pretty good. So the team has done pretty well. So Rocket League, uh, their main season had to get uh, cut short but we were able by the end of COVID, um, or not the end of COVID, but our end of our season, uh, we were able to get into another tournament, but we weren't able to practice uh, together. So they practiced and played uh, in their homes. And uh, we did pretty well. We were uh, qualified for the NLRS, and they actually ended up winning that. It was a kind of like a Cinderella story where they, uh, the, it's a double elimination, and they lost the first uh, the first match against Ole Miss, and then they come back, win losers bracket, and then actually go to grand finals versus uh, Ole Miss, and they they sweep them. So that was that was pretty pretty awesome to see. Yeah. So when they competed in Rocket League, they were uh, in their own homes, and we actually have an international student uh, who lives in England, and he was actually playing uh, in his home from England. Uh, on higher ping, which is, you know, can create some uh, uh, lag issues. Uh, and so that was, that was interesting. And uh, yeah, they still, still compete and still won. Today, I'm going to talk to you about physics. Come on in, girls. Let's go. This is the first rocket to get humans to Mars. I'm a rocket structural engineer designing and building parts of the rocket. You are the generation that will be stepping foot on Mars. Do I have a group of astronauts on my hands? Yes. You can become a rocket scientist or whatever else you want to be. That's gonna wrap things up for this week's edition of Community Rewind. Remember, if you miss anything, anything at all, you can always head on over to WLCUTV.com, scroll down till you see the Community Rewind icon, or one of our other great icons right there. Click there and you can take you over to the WLCU YouTube channel where you can find Community Rewind, Dog on Public Issues, What's Cooking Neighbor, it's a great show. A lot of great shows from WLCU, uh, free of charge from Campbell's University and uh, WLCU. So that's going to wrap things up for this week. So for Mark Mann, Wanda Washington, CJ Moritz, and Dr. Wendy Wood, I've been your host, Alex Mead, and I will see you all next Friday night at 7 p.m. for more Community Rewind. What's up guys, I'm Don Smith and this is What's Cooking Neighbors. So join me every Friday right here on WLCU where I take your taste buds on a culinary journey.